Everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you probably know that I use the M4 iPad Pro as my main content creation device. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how exactly I plan out my videos and edit on the iPad. So I'm gonna show you how I take notes on the videos that I'm working on, how I actually film and record them, and how I edit the video and also the thumbnail in the process of uploading them onto YouTube. So everything that I'm gonna be showing you today doesn't necessarily pertain to the M4 iPad Pro. Technically, you can do this on any iPad, though I will say that once you get into graphic design and video editing, I think the iPad Air and the iPad Pro are best fit for that, but technically you could do everything that I'm about to show you on even a standard iPad. Pad, but having a keyboard and a trackpad do make a big difference. So if there's any specific part that you want to, you know, fast forward to, you can obviously go in the chapters and see what I'm going to talk about. But first, I'm going to show you how I exactly plan out my video. So the one application that I really use to plan out my videos is the Apple Notes app. So I have a designated folder, as you can see right here for YouTube. So when I click on YouTube, I have my video schedule. So these are basically just videos that I'm thinking about posting. And then if there's any captions or anything like that, I like to copy and paste that over here. I just did a reel for a client on a Porsche video. So I just wrote out the caption over here. But then I also have outlines as well for videos that I'm working on and stuff like that. And then obviously for this video, I have just a brief outline of everything that I want to cover. So I use the notes application quite a bit uh, when it comes to planning my videos. Now, in a lot of the videos that I film, I don't use a script. I just like to, you know, face the camera and talk as if I'm talking to you guys in person. But sometimes there's so much information that I do have a script, as you can see here. But uh, a lot of the times I just have this, you know, basic outline that lets me know how exactly I'm going to film the video or what it's going to be about. And as you can see, I keep it very simple. I delete a lot of the notes that I've, that I don't need. Um, there's some scripts that I'll keep around, but a lot of the notes, if I'm done with that video, it's deleted. So once I have the basic outline down for the video that I want to film, I start the filming process. And I'm very happy to say that my, on my entire channel, all my videos are shot on the iPhone. All iPhones nowadays film really, really great video. So right now I'm using the iPhone 16 Pro Max and I film all my videos in 4K. So I always put my iPhone on this tripod, as you can see, it's very MagSafe friendly. But before I hit that record button, I always make sure that I'm mic'd up and I have the receiver connected to the iPhone itself. So that is how I make sure that the quality of the audio is relatively nice. And like I said before, I'm usually not reading off of a script, but there are some instances where I need to read off of a script. Maybe it's not for a YouTube video. Maybe it's a video that I'm doing for a client. And uh, what's really cool is the fact that I also have an iPad mini. So sometimes I use the iPad mini as a teleprompter but that's very here and there I don't do that often and once I have wrapped up the filming of that video I then take my phone and I airdrop that video onto my iPad and once that video is on my iPad I start editing and the editing app of choice for me is LumaFusion it's one of the best mobile video editing applications out there on the app store I highly recommend it I use this over a cap cut and and dare I say Final Cut as well. It's a one-time purchase of $30 and I think it's definitely worth it. And once again, Final Cut is a great application. Having said that though, I feel like for basic editing, LumaFusion does it really, really well. With Final Cut, however, it's a $5 a month subscription or you can get a discounted rate for just 50 bucks if you pay upfront for the entire year. But I use LumaFusion and I'm gonna show you exactly how I utilize this for video editing, both for vertical content for reels and shorts and take talks and also long form content like for YouTube. All right, so let's open up LumaFusion really quickly. And as you can see, I've already loaded up this video that I'm filming for an Instagram reel and a TikTok. So I have this video right here. So basically what I do is I scan through the entire video and as I as you can probably tell I've already made the cuts cuz you see those lines right here, but let's say there's an extra pause. I'll take this and I'll do Command B and it makes a splice. I then take right where I'm about to start talking again and splice it again and then just take this part and delete it just like that. So I go through the entire video and I just make those cuts first. This is before I start adding in the B-roll. Then what I like to do is I'd like to do some, you know, color correction. So I'll take the video, I'll go into color and effects. I can apply LUTs. I already have a lot of LUTs as you can see here. This is kind of what I go for. It's called Filmic D-flat V2. As you can see, this is how it looks without it being blended in. And this is with it fully. 
So let's go with it fully. Maybe I'll make some further enhancements. So I'll go back to original, maybe brighten it up a little bit, add a little bit of contrast, add some saturation, add some vibrancy. I don't like to do too much, just small enhancements. Um, reduce the amount of red that's being shown um, and add a little bit of more of a coolness look to it. And so to make things easy for you, I would do the color grading before I make all the cuts. I guess I just got too excited for this one. Let's say you did the color grading and now you wanna do that for all the other portions of the video, as you can see that I have not had that color grading done. It's very easy to do that. So I take this, the, the clip that I wanna copy, right? Or the effect that I wanna copy. I click this button right here. I click copy. Then I select the entire video and I click paste attributes. So then when you see my timeline, all the clips are synchronized with that same look and feel that I did with the original clip. So the color grading is now done. You know, I've cropped the way I wanted it to. Now it's time to add B-roll. And the way I wanna do this video is I want my talking portion to be on top and the B-roll to be at the bottom. Now you might be wondering, how can I make sure everything is symmetrical? Well, you can have a grid. So basically you click on this rectangle over here, which is preview settings, and then you click on overlays. So I click on overlays and boom, there's a grid that has already been added for me. It's a two by two grid, but I can optimize it and do a three by three grid. You have all these great options, um, but I'd, I'll just click two by two. And if you want, you can have a title safe zone and an action safe zone and a horizon. And you might be wondering what all this is. This is simply to make sure that none of your content is cropped out when you're posting on Instagram and TikTok because all those applications have, you know, text or buttons on the bottom or the top. And this is just making sure that, you know, you are in frame and none of those buttons will, you know, uh, be a distraction on your video. So let me quickly find some footage. So let's say I have this footage right here that I want to add as B-roll. I'm going to make sure it is, you know, for the full duration of that first clip. Then I'm going to click back on that. I'm gonna zoom out and I just wanna fill in that bottom portion. So as you can see, there's this line over here. That's basically you know, distinguishing the top part from the bottom part, so it gives equal distance. So I'm just gonna make sure I bring this up to this line over here, and there you go. So when I play it, you can see me talking and then you have that B-roll at the bottom. So that's kind of how I basically do all my short form videos where you see my talking portion up and then you have B-roll at the bottom. And then I'll just go through all the B-roll that I have. Once again, this is just some filler content, right? I actually need to find B-roll pertaining to this video, right? But uh, let's say I have this great clip right here and I wanna make sure this is full screen. I just keep it as full screen. All right, so this is a pretty good sequence, right? The beginning, it starts off with me up top. Then there's B-roll at the bottom. Then I have, then it goes into this part where it's just all B-roll. But then let's say I want to go back to having, you know, B-roll at the bottom again, right? Well, I take this clip that I want for that next scene. I put it there. But then you might be wondering, wait, now do I have to crop it again like I did initially so that I'm up top and then that's, and then the B-roll's at the bottom? No, you don't have to keep cropping it every single time. What you do is just go back to that original clip, copy the attributes of that, and paste it over here. So click on the new one, paste attributes, and there you go. I'm back up top, and then that B-roll is at the bottom. So now let me show you a finished product, right? Something that if you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, as you can see, this is a finalized video where it's me on top, I've got the B-roll at the bottom, and then there's some sequences where it's just B-roll, as you can see, then there's some sequences where it goes back to me, back to me and the b-roll so it's really really neat and really simple to do and trust me once you spend time with luma fusion or any you know video editing software of your choice the more you work on it and the more pl you play around with it the better and easier it gets i promise you all right so now let me give you an example of a long form video now this video right here is the why you should buy an ipad video that is now published on my youtube channel so you can check that out if you haven't already done so but this is the actual file right here there's my talking portions then there's the animation for my instagram that comes up now obviously the only thing that's changed here is the orientation this is white screen the other one was a portrait screen now with this i don't necessarily like to have an overlay grid. I only do it once just to make sure that I'm centered, right? And once I know that I'm my talking portions are centered, I kind of get rid of the grid. And you can probably tell by now that I have the B-roll 
all muted right over here. There's a mute option. So all the sound from my B-roll will not trickle down to the overall video itself. But I do want to keep the audio for these animations. Therefore, I keep it on a different uh, layer so that it's not muted. And obviously at the very end when I'm happy with my video, I will then take uh, music, background music, and add it onto my video. The only thing I really do is I just make sure that the volume is a lot lower uh, than, my, than my main audio so that you can hear me properly. Then at the very, very end, I add my outro, add a nice little cross dissolve here. So let's remove that so I can show you how I add that. I just go into transitions, cross dissolve, put that right in the middle and there you go so you get this nice really smooth transition right there and once again just like with the short form video i always color correct it so you can see i don't do too much i just maybe increase the brightness here and there a little bit of contrast saturation um, add some coolness to the video and just minor little things that kind of change from video to video but that's basically how i use luma fusion so once I have wrapped up the editing for my video, I then create the thumbnail. And creating the thumbnail is just as important as the video itself. So what I use is the studio application from GoDaddy. It's really, really nice. So what I'm gonna do is just show you how it works. So as you can see, I have a picture of this room. It's nicely lit with ambient lighting. And I think that's the kind of look and feel that I wanna go for, for this video editing, you know, tutorial video that I'm doing for you guys. So this is my background. I have it slightly blurred. So let me show you how I did that. So I click on edit. This is the original image, but I want to have a slight blur to it. So the focus is more on, you know, me, right? So I go into image and then I find the image that I'm looking for, which is right here. This is how the actual image looks like when I took it. Obviously, I don't want this background showing. There's a So when I click remove image background, it will literally take out the entire background from this picture. It's really cool. There you go. So it took out the background. I'm just going to zoom in. I want people looking at this image and just by the image alone, they know that I'm talking about video editing, right? So I'm pointing at an iPad that clearly shows video editing software, right? But I want text and almost all my uh, thumbnails, I have some sort of text. So I go into my text, I type in video editing. And I always like using the San Francisco UI text. And I like it to always be lowercase. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so have it like this. I'm gonna edit it a little bit so there's less spacing in between the letters. So let's kind of, I'm just rearranging it a little bit so I'm kind of in the center. And now I want the video editing text to be behind me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this layers button right here and I'm gonna put it behind me. So there you go. It's me pointing at the iPad with the words video editing and probably guess that this video is about you know, editing video on the iPad. So now I'm looking at it, I think it looks pretty good. So I'll just save this, but I'm not done yet. I always take my Apple Pencil and I just wanna add one final touch. So I'll take this, I'll click the editing button and then I'll look for the pencil icon and then I'll go for the yellow and I'll just have the video pointing, the word video pointing at the iPad, just like this. Cause I kind of like how it, it's just a little raw at the iPad. This is something I do in a lot of my videos. So when I zoom out, voila, it's video editing. I've got that pencil, you know, uh, drawn arrow. Looks super cool, super neat. And I think I'm ready to upload the video. Now, obviously to upload the video on YouTube, you have to do it through YouTube Studio. Now I have the YouTube Studio app, but I never upload it from it because I get a lot more controls doing it from the desktop version. I do have the YouTube Studio app here, as you can see, but, but I always use this app just to see insights. You know, how are the videos doing, the views that it's getting, the comments, right, that you guys are providing me with. Just kind of like to see all that information at a quick glance. So that is what I use YouTube Studio for, the application at least. All right, so now I go into the desktop version of YouTube Studio and uh, I click on the Create button, click on Upload Videos. So I click Select Files, goes into photo library. I'm just gonna click some random video just to show you the process of it all. It starts uploading. I give it a title, how to edit videos on iPad. I add the description, I upload my thumbnail. And as you can see, the thumbnail has been added. 
The title is there. I'm going to write the description later. So I'll add this to the all things Apple playlist. And obviously I want the video to be monetized. I've worked very hard for it. Next. None of the above for ad suitability. Now, this is why I prefer using the desktop version um, because I can tag products through it and I can add an end screen. So for example, if I want two videos that I want to show up when people watch this, I can choose, let's see, maybe this one. And then maybe I want people to also see this option as a video that pops up. Because at the end of the day, you're working so hard uh, to, to produce this content you want people to keep watching more of your videos that are related to the one that you just uploaded. And you can have people select the ones that you think are most appropriate. And you can do that through the desktop version of YouTube Studio. And I highly recommend that you do that. So you save it, then you're allowing the video to go through all of its checks and then you go into visibility. So I'm gonna schedule this video for Sunday. I'm gonna schedule it for Sunday, June 1st. I want it to go out at, let's say 9 a.m and then boom, it's been scheduled. So this is how I edit videos on my iPad and publish them. All right guys, so this basically wraps up my video on how I edit videos on my iPad Pro. I hope this video was informational and helpful for you guys. But of course, there's a lot that goes into video editing and this was just me touching the surface here, right? So whatever questions that you still may have, definitely ask them in the comment section below and I'll definitely reply to them. And also I'm gonna be working on more videos as well. I've started to use AI a lot to help me with video editing. I didn't have time to show that in this video, but if you are interested in seeing how you can use artificial intelligence to enhance your editing and make videos look even better or even your thumbnails even better, let me know if you're interested in seeing a video like that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and I'll see you next time.